Greetings, folks, and welcome to the madness that is our world. It's like a bustling city at rush hour, where everyone is a taxi driver with a cup of coffee in one hand and a cell phone in the other, weaving through traffic like a ballerina on roller skates. Or maybe it's more like a beehive, where each bee is frantically buzzing around trying to remember if it left the oven on back at the hive. Or perhaps it's like a shopping mall during a sale, where everyone turns into a wild gazelle leaping over racks and diving under displays, all in pursuit of that last pair of half-priced jeans. It's a wild, chaotic and downright hilarious world we're living in, folks. But don't worry, we're not just aimlessly wandering this labyrinth of lunacy. So buckle up, my friends, because we're about to dive headfirst into the rabbit hole. Now, have you ever stopped to consider that our world might be a teensy bit psychopathic? Let's chew on that for a moment, shall we? Look at the corporate world. It's like a concrete jungle out there. Survival of the fittest is the name of the game. The cubicle next to you could be your stepping stone or your tombstone, depending on how cunning your workplace maneuvering is. It's all about who can climb the ladder fastest, push the competition aside and smile while doing it. Doesn't that sound awfully similar to a psychopath's playbook? And let's not forget the ruthless world of politics. It's like a Shakespearean play on steroids, full of backstabbing, deceit and power plays. Politicians can smile for the cameras, kiss babies, and in the next breath orchestrate a scandal to take down their rivals. It's a Game of Thrones, minus the dragons, but with plenty of fire-breathing speeches. Oh, and the obsession with social media popularity, uh, that's another psychopathic trait right there. We're all guilty of it, aren't we? Scrolling through feeds, jealously eyeing the picture-perfect lives of others, and then meticulously curating our own posts to project an image of success and happiness. The higher the likes, the higher the dopamine rush. It's a cycle of validation and manipulation that would make any psychopath proud, but don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. This psychopathic nature of the world isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's the competitive spirit that drives innovation, the ambition that fuels progress and the desire for validation that connects us all. It's a mad world, yes, but it's our mad world, and let's be honest, it would be rather dull without uh, a bit of madness, wouldn't it? So the next time you find yourself plotting to take over the world or obsessively checking your Instagram likes, just remember, you're not alone. So you see, we're all living in a mad world and we're all a bit mad ourselves. Now, don't panic, but you might be more like a psychopath than you think. I know. I know, that's a bit of a blow to the ego, isn't it? Most of us fancy ourselves as the heroes of our own stories, not potential villains. But let's face it, we all have those moments when we're a little more low-key than Thor. Take manipulation, for instance. You might not be pulling off grand schemes like some Machiavellian mastermind, but tell me, have you never played the puppy dog eyes card to get out of doing the dishes? Or perhaps exaggerated a cold just a smidge to skip a day of work. Well, congratulations, you've just tapped into your inner psychopath. And then there's empathy, or rather the lack of it. Now, I'm not saying you're heartless, but think about it. Have you ever scrolled past a charity ad without a second thought, or found yourself more engrossed in your phone than in your friend's tearful breakup story? Maybe that's not so much a lack of empathy as it is empathy fatigue, but hey, it's a thin line. Oh, and let's not forget charm. Who among us hasn't turned on the old charisma to win over a tough crowd or to wiggle out of a sticky situation? Sure, we're not all James Bonds, effortlessly suave and debonair, but even the most awkward among us can pull off a charming smile or a witty comeback when the occasion calls for it. And yes, that too is a trait you share with psychopaths. So, you see, being a little psychopathic isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a part of being human. And while we're not suggesting you embrace your inner Hannibal Lecter, it's worth noting that some of these traits, when used responsibly, can actually be quite useful. So, next time you're feeling a bit too normal, remember you've got a touch of the psychopath in you too. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom in our psychopathic world. Now, before you start checking under your bed for boogeymen with PhDs in manipulation, let's take a step back and look at the bright side. I know, a bright side to psychopathy sounds like a punchline to a very dark joke, doesn't it? But bear with me. There's a term called functional psychopathy. It's like having a pet tiger that does your taxes. You've got the power and the fear factor, but it's also incredibly useful. In the right doses, some psychopathic traits can lead to extraordinary success and innovation. Imagine the unflinching focus of a cat stalking its prey. That's the kind of laser focus some of the world's top athletes, surgeons and CEOs possess. 
They're not distracted by fear or doubt. They see the goal and everything else fades into the background. Then there's the charm. A psychopath's charisma can be as captivating as a magician's trick, making you forget you're actually watching a grown man pull a rabbit out of a hat. That charm can be a powerful tool in business and politics, opening doors and winning hearts. And let's not forget about risk-taking. Psychopaths are like those friends who convince you to go bungee jumping off a ridiculously high bridge. They're not afraid of taking risks, and sometimes those risks pay off big time. So no, we're not saying start practicing your evil laugh or start plotting world domination. But maybe, just maybe, if you channel some of these traits in a positive, ethical way, you might find yourself achieving things you never thought thought possible. The key is balance. Like a good cup of tea, it's all about the right blend. Too much milk and it's a milky mess. Not enough and it's just hot leaf water. So mix in a dash of charm, a pinch of focus and a splash of risk taking. Stir well and voila, you're sipping on success. So embrace your inner psychopath folks, it might just be your secret weapon. Now before we wrap up, how about a little brain teaser to keep you on your toes? Let's dive into a riddle that's as twisted as the human mind itself. It'll tie in nicely with our theme of psychopathy and give you a taste of the enigma that is the human psyche. Remember, this riddle is all in good fun, a little mental gymnastics to keep those brain cells flexing. Imagine, if you will, a small, nondescript town where everyone knows everyone. It's a peaceful place, but there's a catch. You see, this town is unique. Half of its residents are honest, always telling the truth, while the other half are psychopathic liars, incapable of uttering a single truthful word. One day a stranger comes to town. He's heard about this peculiar place and is intrigued, so he decides to conduct an experiment. He gathers the entire town in the central square and asks one simple question. Are you a liar or a truth teller? Here's the twist. Every resident of the town, whether a truth teller or a liar, responds with the same phrase, I am a liar. The stranger is taken aback. He now faces an enigma, a paradox. So here's the riddle for you. If everyone in the town claims to be a liar, how can the stranger determine who is telling the truth and who is lying? I'll give you a moment to mull it over. Got an answer? Well, let's unravel this tangled web we've weaved. The answer lies in the very nature of the townsfolk. The truth-tellers, by their very nature, cannot claim to be liars. That would be a lie, and they're incapable of lying. So, the people who claim to be liars must be the actual liars, as only they could lie about being liars. A lie within a lie, a twist within a twist. But wait, there's a catch. If a liar says they're a liar, doesn't that make it a truth? And if it's a truth, then doesn't that mean they're not a liar? Ah, uh, the paradox deepens. This riddle serves as a metaphor for our world. We're all playing roles, some of us truth-tellers, some of us liars. But at the end of the day, we're all human, all a bit mad, all a bit psychopathic. And that's okay. So take this riddle, ponder it, and remember it. It's a reminder of the complex, twisted, and wonderfully mad world we live in. And with that, we leave you to ponder the madness of our world. Remember, we're all a little bit crazy, and that's perfectly okay.